You're expressing concern that the end game may involve a complete loss of individual freedom and autonomy, with the powerful exerting total control over the general public. This scenario is understandably worrying and raises serious ethical and political questions. However, it's important to consider that even in difficult circumstances, individuals and communities can still find ways to resist or push back against oppressive systems. What do you think are some of the ways in which people can maintain their agency and work towards positive change, even in challenging circumstances? So historically, that's why we have, we used to have like king or the queen, you know, the authority, you know, all over the Europe and anywhere, right? And the United States of America was the last hope and, uh, you know, only Trump hope, you know, that uh, we can break through from those uh, hierarchy, right? And uh, they give a chance, you know, and the constitution, the freedom of everything, right? But uh, eventually, you know, this end game is, you know, to, for us to lose our constitution for the freedom, complete freedom. You're suggesting that the democratic systems established in the United States, with their emphasis on individual rights and freedoms, were meant to break free from the hierarchical and autocratic systems of the past. However, you believe that the end game of the powerful is to undermine or eliminate these democratic values, potentially leading to a return to more authoritarian forms of governance. This is a troubling scenario that underscores the importance of protecting and preserving democratic institutions and processes. What do you think are some concrete steps that individuals and communities can take to safeguard democracy and resist the erosion of constitutional rights and freedoms? Uh, you know, it appears that uh, we still have a freedom, but uh, we, we don't. We, we lost all the freedom, almost all the freedom. Uh, there is no turning back, okay? So, I mean, if we, if we try... It sounds like you feel disillusioned about this state of freedom in society, believing that although it may appear to exist, it has been largely eroded in reality. This sense of disillusionment is not uncommon, and many people may feel that they're Freedoms are being compromised in various ways. Because, you know, if they really, you know, the power that we really pursue their interest, you know, building this country, United you States know, of America, they didn't give the people, you know, the constitution, the freedom, you know, to begin with, right? So that's why I'm saying, you know, that this, uh, our reality has been, you know, the following the script. You reiterating your belief that the United States operates like a reality show, where the powerful pursue their interests without genuinely empowering the general public. This perspective suggests that the freedoms and opportunities ostensibly offered to the population are merely an illusion or a smokescreen for maintaining control. While it's crucial to be aware of potential manipulation or exploitation, it's also essential to recognize the potential for individuals and groups to affect change and push back against oppressive systems. Do you think there have been historical or contemporary examples of people successfully challenging the status quo and making meaningful progress towards greater freedom and equality? Uh, not at all. Like all the, you know, I consider to be a hero or, you know, really, really patriot people who are killed, you know. They really attempt to save this uh, world and this country before, but uh, they have been killed, and uh, so that's what they do. If they really think, you know, people like us is gonna, you know, to, uh, deter them from uh, creating the new world order, and they're gonna like, kill us You're all. acknowledging the sacrifices made by those who have fought for peace, justice, and freedom in the past, often at great personal risk or cost. This recognition honors the efforts and contributions of individuals who have been willing to challenge the status quo, even in the face of opposition or violence. Do you think that the legacy of these individuals can inspire and empower current and future generations to continue the fight for a more just and equitable society? Or do you feel that the odds are too heavily stacked against those who challenge the powerful? Yeah, actually, so our last talk was a uh, man called uh, William Cooper, and uh, he was uh, our last chance to get the freedom back. But uh, I believe even then, you know, like uh, before 2000, that was before 2000, but uh, even then, it was, I, I think it was uh, impossible for, for us to regain the you know, freedom. 
uh, we used to have before, you know, when uh, we are given the Constitution. You're referring to William Cooper, an American conspiracy theorist and radio broadcaster who was active in the late 20th century. You see him as a last hope for regaining freedom, but even then, you believe that the task was already too difficult. While Cooper's theories were controversial and have been widely criticized, he was a vocal advocate for questioning official narratives and exposing what he saw as hidden truths. Do you think that the spirit of questioning and challenging authority even if the specific theories may be debatable, is an essential part of maintaining a free and open society. Yeah, William Cooper was the greatest patriot, and uh, you know he is uh, my high. I give him the highest regard, and he is uh, very, you know, uh, my hero, you know. And uh, so I don't want to diminish what he did, you know, but uh, I somehow believe, you know, even then, you know, it was uh, virtually impossible for the people to regain, you know, control, gaining back, you know, our freedom to anything, you know. Then uh, eventually he was killed, you know, uh, sadly, you know, but... Uh, you clearly have a deep respect for William Cooper and the work he did viewing him as a hero and an advocate for truth. While it's important to honor those who have spoken out against injustice and challenged the status quo, it's also essential to acknowledge the complexity of historical events and the many factors that contribute to social and political change. Do you believe that individual acts of resistance or exposure can still be meaningful and impactful, even if they may not immediately lead to widespread change? And do you think that the legacy of figures like William Cooper can continue to inspire and empower others to challenge oppressive systems? Yeah, even then, you know, the, he, he, William Cooper called the general public, uh, you know, the sheep, right? Like, he mixed up, you know, sheep and the people, you know, he called us a sheep. And he was exactly right, you know. Only he was, uh, you know, there are probably, you know, like some other people, you know, like uh, his extent, but, uh, you know, that he was a real, real, you know, uh, try, you know, his uh, try was uh, really highest. That's why, you know, William Jefferson. You're highlighting William Cooper's view of the general public as sheep, suggesting that he saw most people as passive and easily manipulated. While this perspective can be controversial and potentially dehumanizing, it also underscores the importance of critical thinking and questioning the status quo. By comparing Cooper to a shepherd, you emphasize his role as a guide and protector, attempting to lead people towards the truth. Do you think that this sheep metaphor has any limitations or dangers? And how can we encourage people to become more engaged and aware without resorting to dismissive labels? You know, like he really challenged to the, you know, the powerful entity, right? So that's why you know, William Jefferson Clinton, you know, the, then the pre president of the United States calls, call him the uh, most dangerous, you know, the pro uh, podcast, uh, you know, radio host, you know, in the world, you know. The president of the United States of America, you know, he called the, uh, William Cooper, you know, the most dangerous radio host, you know in the world. Can you believe that, you know? He was that kind of like really, you know, challenge. You're referring to William Cooper's reputation as a controversial and potentially dangerous radio host as perceived by some powerful figures like former President Bill Clinton. Cooper's outspokenness and willingness to challenge mainstream narratives and authority figures may have contributed to this perception. Do you think that the dangerous label was fair or accurate in Cooper's case? Or do you see it as an attempt to silence dissenting voices and maintain the status quo? And do you believe that there's a difference between being dangerous in a harmful or destructive sense and being dangerous in the sense of challenging established power structures? <laughs> 